Hello, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar, Accelerate Business Growth and Make Better Decisions Through Collaborative Reporting. We appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule to join us today. Um, before we begin, there's just a couple of housekeeping items that we'd like to mention. All attendees are in listen-only mode, so if you have any questions, please just submit them through the GoToWebinar question box. We'll be answering those in our Q&A session at the end. Um, we are also recording today's webinar, and you will receive a recording in our follow-up email tomorrow. With that, I'd like to introduce today's speaker, Stephanie Gamber, VP of Solutions Engineering at Solver. Stephanie has over 15 years experience implementing ERP, financial reporting, budgeting, and corporate performance management solutions, and has been with Solver over eight years, allowing her the opportunity to work with hundreds of customers on their successful Solver implementations. So Stephanie, I believe at this point, we're ready to transition over to you. All right, fantastic. I will take the reins from here and we can dive into today's presentation. So before I jump into actually showing you a little bit about the Solver software and walking through um, some different scenarios there and some things I'd like to demonstrate today, I just wanna set the stage a little bit and really at a high level, highlight some of the key things that we wanna make sure that you're able to see in today's demonstrations, some, some takeaways and really what the goal of the presentation is. So within every organization, every company right now, we have so many different systems. We have so much data that on a daily basis we're consuming that we're trying to do meaningful analysis with, that we're trying to make actionable decisions that make sense to drive the growth of the business. Um, and that data is so important, but it's only as important as we can take it and put it into a meaningful format where we can really analyze it and organize it. So I'm gonna show you how with Solver we're able to do that. The other important piece of that is how quickly can we get access to that information? How quickly can we get the intelligence that we need to make those decisions? So with Solver, we're gonna show you how we can use KPIs, different reports, and we can consolidate all of those data sources um, into simple dashboards, reports, and different types of simulations that we can run to get the type of information we need to make those decisions. So that's really the goal of what I want to show you today. So this, this may look a little bit familiar to some of you. I, I can certainly relate to this. I come from this accounting finance background and I have gone through many a budget cycle both prior to Solver and with my customers here during our implementations. And some of the really common challenges we see, especially when it comes to, to planning, when it comes to that um, budgeting and forecasting, is that it, it, it becomes a very manual process. So in a lot of cases, what you're doing is you, you're doing a lot of work in Excel. So you might be extracting information, running simulations, making adjustments, having links between various spreadsheets. And that's very time consuming. It's not efficient and it doesn't give you the insight that you're really looking for. So what we're gonna show you is how with the planning cycle with Solver that we can do different types of parameter driven models. We can do different simulations, what if scenarios. And ideally what we're trying to do you is make your budget a lot more accurate, a lot more real time so that you can analyze that accuracy and you can make changes on the fly. So we wanna take you away from that manual budget process where you're working with Excel, where you're working with manual input to give you a much more streamlined, modern type of budget where you can make quick changes on the fly to adjust to changes in the market, changes within the industry and be um, more efficient and effective with how you're budgeting. So that's, the, that's, that's budgeting. And then of course, when it gets to reporting, the big challenge here is oftentimes we're trying to get information from multiple different sources. Sometimes we have multiple tools that we're working with. So again, Excel comes into play here, but sometimes you have different report writers, you have different audiences that you're trying to get different reporting packages to. So with Solver, the really big thing, one of the biggest benefits is that you have one single cloud-based tool for all of your reporting, all of your consolidations. So all of those important key management data sources within the organization, we're bringing it all together in one tool. So you only have to learn one, um, one report writing solution. And for all your users, it's very easy for them to access via the web browser. So taking it all into just a single solution. 
So to sum that up at a high level, this is really what it looks like. So we talked a little bit about reporting challenges and we'll dive into that more with the actual demonstration. We talked about some of the planning challenges. Um, so that's all, those are just the various components to what the solver architecture and what the solver solution looks like. So down at the bottom here in this slide, you can see these are the many different data sources that any organization has. So this will of course vary by your organization, but I have, I've yet to work with anyone that's lucky enough to have everything they need within one system, whether that's their, their ERP um, or, a, or a homegrown database. I've yet to see anyone that has fewer than you know, a number of different solutions here, a number of different databases. So in this case, some samples here, payroll system, your ERP, CRM, you might have some internal operational data sources, um, you might have an internal data warehouse, you may have some of your information in the cloud. So with the Solver Data Warehouse, we're taking all of those various data sources, bringing it together in one, and then from there, we're layering on top all of your reporting, all of your planning, and then the one piece that we hadn't talked about yet is the dashboard portion. So we're also able to create really neat, powerful visualizations with our pre-built integration to Power BI. And because we have all of this available to us, we're able to get that information to the executives, to management, to the different users that need it on an ongoing basis so that we can really make better, faster decisions for the business. So here's just a quick overview of our Power BI pre-built integration. And then what I'm gonna do is go right into the software solution demonstration so we can see some of this in action. But just to show you, um, if, if you're already using Power BI, this is gonna give you some additional capabilities and functionality because Solver is gonna take your data and organize it in a way that you have a single data source um, that you can report off of. Some of the complexities with Power BI with getting that schema in place, that's resolved with Solver. So you can really streamline what you're doing with Power BI. If you've been thinking about Power BI and you're not quite there yet, um, once you deploy Solver, what it's gonna do is it's gonna allow you to implement Power BI on a much more streamlined basis. So instead of potentially weeks to build out some of these, these dashboards, because a lot of that work is already done and organized in Solver, it can go down to hours and days um, with our deployment. So just a nice benefit if this is something that you're looking towards uh, with your implementation, if you're looking to do more powerful visualizations with Power BI or to expand what you're already doing with Power BI. So I think with that, I probably talked enough uh, just at a, a general overview level. And let's dive into Solver and take a look at the software itself. So the first thing I wanna do here is I wanna show you what it looks like when we're accessing Solver. So this is gonna be accessed by every single user that you have, whether they're um, an end user who just receives reports, maybe they come into the system on a monthly basis when they're notified that the financial package is ready, or maybe you have your power users that are in the system every day, running reports, um, setting things up with the budget. It, everyone's gonna access it via their web browser. So it makes it really easy to get into the system. There's no, um, elaborate setup or they don't have to log into terminal server or anything like that, just right directly from their web browser, they're able to get exactly what they need based on their user profile and based on their security settings. So they will only see what's relevant to them and what they've been granted access to. So here, I'm logged in as an administrative user, so I have full access to everything, so we can do pretty much anything we wanna do in the system today. But what I want to start with, I just want to show you at a very, very high level what it really means when we're talking about that architecture of combining all of these data sources into a data warehouse. And then I'm going to show you what we can do with this data. So here, this is a, a view, this is a backend view that's showing with our pre-built um, wizard-driven connectors to many different data sources, so to um, all the Dynamics ERPs, CRM, uh, various other data sources, whatever data you have, we have a way to get that into Solver. And then you can consolidate and create reports off of those data sources together. So if you have a need for your CRM data and your general ledger data in a single report, because it's all in Solver, you're gonna have the capability to do that. 
So these are just a few different sample data sources that we've brought into this demo model here. So you can see, of course, we've got our general ledger coming from your ERP. We have project data, revenue, payroll. That's going to be typically from your payroll system. And then we have various information around travel, strategy, different cloud-based systems. So you can really see that what we're doing is we're tying all of these very different data sources together into one tool. Now, now that that's set up, and this is part of the initial solver setup, what can we do with that? So let's take a look at some of the, the powerful visualizations and outputs from all this information that we can create. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on this tab here. And what, what we're looking at here is our pre-built integration with Power BI. So I mentioned that we have that pre-built integration. So everything that you're seeing here, this is being driven off of all of the data that you have in Solver. So Anytime that you have new um, financial data in Solver, that's going to be reflected here in these dashboards. If you update your budget or forecast, again, that's going to be updated in these dashboards. So when you need to get a comprehensive picture of the organization, you can pull from all of these different data sources and really get that global view. So in this case, this is a typical KPI analysis um, summary that a lot of our executive users really like to see. Because when you log in, you get an overview into some key areas of the business. So revenues, profitability, and liquidity. So we can see each of these three columns align with, with those various areas. And then we have several different KPIs that we've built out based on what our executive user wants to see. And what we're doing here is you can see some of these are green and some of these are red. And the difference is that if we are performing well against budget, so if we're exceeding our budgeted amounts, um, whether it's, if it's a positive um, variance, then it's going to be in green. And if it's a negative variance, then it's going to be in red. So we can very quickly hone in on areas that might need attention. And you can see here on the left-hand side, if we want to adjust some of these different selections, maybe see it for a different period, or if we have multiple entities, we want to take a look at those different entities, we can slice and dice this any way we want so that we have really good visibility into what's going on with the business. These can also be used as alerts. So let's say we want to set a threshold for our cash level. If it falls below a certain threshold, we want an alert to be sent so that we know that we need to take action on the cash management side. That's something that's also can be configured Figured here within these KPIs. So these can really help you monitor the performance of the business. So from here, this is mostly general ledger data, but we want to look at some of the other more specific underlying data that flows into this. So here we see that our product revenue is a little bit underperforming against our budget. And we want to dig into that and see where, where that variance is occurring so we can get more information and, and take action on that. So down here on the bottom, we have some additional in-depth analysis we can do. So some of these are links to Power BI reports or dashboards, and some of these are links back to solver reports. So you can see, depending on the different logo here, what we're going to be looking at. So let's say, first, for starters, we want to dig into revenue and we want to look at that in more of a visual dashboard style view. So here I click on that. This pulls me into my more detailed revenue analysis dashboard. So I'm digging in a little bit deeper here for starters. And over here on the right hand side, I have my different lines of revenue and I can see what my variance is. I can see my comparatives to, to last year and then I have some traffic lights to highlight that. Then down here I have some trends so I can view this in different ways um, to really get a good feel for what's going on. So my product revenue was a little bit problematic. So if I click specifically on product revenue, I can isolate that one area and I can see exactly um, what the detail is with my product revenue. Now let's say I want to even take that a little bit further. Maybe I want to see a, a more formatted report on this. I want to see individual transactions. I want to see those sales transactions. I want to see my sales team. I want to see that level of detail. Well, Again, right here from Solver, I can go into that level of detail because we have that integration with Power BI. So I can select my, my Solver report that I want to see. So in this case, I pulled up my sales by salesperson report. And you can see I'm right back here in that same Solver portal that we were initially looking at. 
And in this case, what I have here is I have the linked report that was linked to that revenue dashboard and I can get more detail by salesperson. So let me pop this out. I can pop this into full screen view so we can see a little bit more detail. So we have um, some various just breakout by salesperson here. So any charts and graphs we can add to these reports. But when we wanna get down to our black and white numbers, we have that here as well. So now we can look at our individual salesperson by month, month over month, and start to see where we might have some discrepancies. And if we want to get even more into the details, so maybe this is good, but we need to see if we have a, a customer that's typically a large source of our revenue and we want to see if um, there was an impact in the current month or we want to see if that salesperson had any sales for that particular customer, all we need to do is right click on any value that we want to drill down on and we can click the drill down option. And from there, what we'll see are the detailed transactions coming over from the source system. So in a lot of cases, this will be um, your ERP. So we'll be pulling that sales detail from your ERP. And now you can start to see, okay, what customers are we dealing with? What types of transactions do we have here? What are the invoice numbers? All of that good detail that you have within your system is available to you here. So that takes you from a very, very high level view. So when we start with those KPIs and those alerts, that gives us that real global view. But because in Solver, we're bringing together all of those different sources of data, we're able to um, get all the way down to the most granular level of detail to really isolate any discrepancies or any issues within the system. So that empowers your users to have access to what they need to get the answers that they need to, to do their job. So that, that's, that's that sort of view. Now, the other thing that you're gonna have is you'll have different users with, with different capabilities. So this is more of a viewer, right? So we're viewing different reports, but what if we want um, to do a little bit more than that? So I am going to, let's see here, swap this over so we can see a few different things that we can do within the system. So, that was on demand, right? So we're looking at viewing what we want when we want to see it. So within Solver, we have this, this uh, module that we call it, where you have access to all of the different reports that you might want to run at any time. So let's say I just want to go into the system and see my library of reports. I can do so here. Now, all of these reports, these are going to be the reports that are available to me, that are available to my user so that I can at any time um, run in to the system, run a report, analyze the data, get whatever information I need based on what I have access to. So these are all organized by categories here on the left-hand side. So if I need to see my consolidation reports, um, maybe my intercompany eliminations, I can click on that, I can isolate that. And this allows me to organize and distribute these via categories to different users. Now, Everything I have here, so if I scrolled through this, you would see a ton of different reports, financial reports, operational reports, um, different analysis of budget versus actual, where we can see different views, where we can see how we're performing. And these are actually all solver templates. So anything that you see today, this is a solver template, and this is something that can be packaged with your deployment because all of our customers have access to all of these templates. So just keep that in mind as we go through some of these different models here. So let me just show you the difference here, accessing a report and viewing that on demand so that you can see what that looks like as a user versus a user that has a report shared with them. So I am going to pull up a report here. So let's take a look at this one here called PNL Analysis Monthly. So I'm selecting the report I want to view. And here I can select the different parameters that I want to run it for. So if we have multiple entities, I can do a consolidation or a single entity. I can run it for different budget scenarios. Let's say we have a few different iterations of our budget, or as we reforecast, I can do that. I can choose the period. And then ultimately that output is going to be what we see here in our report. So again, we have some charting and, and graphing components. And What's really nice about this is that everything you see that's sort of that visual element where we have different things highlighted, we have different colors, 
This is native Excel. So the report design experience for Solver is entirely Excel-based. So anytime we want to add some real specific formatting, that's very easy to do because you don't have to learn any specific Solver coding or language to, to get that layout that you want. You do it all in Excel. So when you're building a report, you're going to drag and drop the fields that you want to see with their friendly names coming over from whatever data source. And then you just add any formatting you want. So if you want to highlight something, if you want to make it bold, if you want to change the size of the font, that is very, very easy to do. And I, I can say that one thing that happens a lot is we'll have customers that have a very, very specific report format, oftentimes for their maybe like a board package or something like that, where it takes a considerable amount of time to put that together in Excel. So often they're taking reports from different sources and then compiling it in Excel to get that final output. So the big difference that you'll see with Solver is that instead of running those reports and then formatting, you do the formatting when you're initially building the report. And then at that point, it's part of the report. It's already in that format that you want. So all you have to do is execute it and it's ready to go. So there's no after the fact manipulation. So if there's anywhere where you find you're running reports, you're having to add reports together, you're having to change formatting, think of that as the manual process that you can very easily eliminate with Solver because that's really one of the huge areas that we see um, big improvements with our customers that are using the tool. So again, this report, all of these charts and graphs, all of this conditional formatting to highlight different variances. And then again, I can run this report for whatever parameters I want. And then if I want to drill down on underlying detail, I can do that. So here I, I have a revenue number that I might want to drill down on. I can drill down into the general ledger. I can see how this hit the GL, see those actual journal entry transactions, or maybe I want to drill back to my accounts receivable. I can do that as well. So this is just going to be available to you within the system, depending on what you want to have access to. A couple quick notes here with what else you can do with these reports. You can export them to Excel. So if you want to take this down into a static Excel file, very easy to do, or a PDF if you don't want anyone to be able to make those changes. You can also add comments and share it with other users. So if there's maybe someone else in the system that you would like to review this, maybe you want to point out a variance and have them review that and, and add an explanation, you can share that with them. And when you share that report with a user, what happens is it gets archived. And an archive is the inbox for all of the different solver users. So let me show you what that looks like. So if I were to share a copy of this with myself, or if someone were to share a copy of this with me, what would happen is I would get a notification saying, Stephanie just shared a report with you. I would get an email. I could click that link, and it would take me right to the solver portal, right to my archive. And here I can see all of the reports that have been shared with me, or that maybe I've shared a copy with myself for, um, for future review. So those are all viewable here. It's pretty intuitive because you can see the highlighted ones. Those are the ones that are new that I haven't reviewed yet. And then the ones that um, are not highlighted, not bold, are ones that I've already had a chance to review. So you might have some users that only access reports this way, because it's very common that you have some users that don't need to be in the system throughout the month running reports, right? Um, and maybe it's not a good thing for them to be in the system mid-month running reports because the, the books aren't closed, they might see partial numbers, it could be very confusing. So the way that they consume their reports is they receive a notification that the reports have been finalized and shared with them. They can click the link, go right to Solver, and view those reports um, as soon as they're ready, and they can view them whenever they want. Um, but the nice thing about this is if I pull up um, any of these, these reports for our users is that it's still a live report in Solver. So let's just pull up here our strategic KPIs for our budget and just open that up. So when I look at these reports, um, what I can do is, is 
if I'm viewing something like a financial report and I have a variance, I have that same drill down capability as a live user in the system. So whether if I'm just running a report myself or if a report is shared with me, I still have the ability to take any number and to click on those numbers, right click on those numbers and see the underlying transactional details. So we're still live in the database. So any of these reports will have that built-in capability for us. So if I'm sharing something just like a standard balance sheet, which might be um, a report where maybe there's a little bit more meaningful information for my drill down, I can always right click, drill down and see what that looks like. So this is good for self-service. So if you have maybe some users that review reports on a monthly basis and they're they're coming back to you asking questions, they're asking um, what you know what's hitting this account, this gives them a way to get those answers themselves to have a little bit more self-service um, and to be able to understand their, their financials or their other reports. So it just gives them a little more power. You can turn this on and off if you want for different users, but in a lot of cases, this is a really good benefit to give them that visibility. Uh, one last thing that I think is has been pretty neat that you can do within Solver is any of these reports, you can group them together into a presentation. So if you are doing a maybe a monthly uh, presentation where you're summarizing your financials, a uh, board presentation, or maybe a, a presentation after the budget, and you're taking your reports and you're moving them over into PowerPoint. This is a quicker way that you can do that in a lot of cases where you just want to put those reports into a presentation friendly view. So here we have what we call playlists. And within playlists, I can set up any number of playlists that I want and group relevant reports into that playlist. And when I check one of these existing playlists, you can see all of the reports that are part of that playlist. So I can add reports here if I want to, I can update reports. It all flows into my, my playlist. And when I go to show my playlist, it's going to pop me into this full screen view where I can see the individual, the table of contents, and then I can also um, see the individual reports as well. Oop, let me do a quick refresh here. Let's see. Sometimes that, that view doesn't pop up all the way. There we go when I'm on the uh, shared screen with the meeting. This is what I wanted to show you. So once I pop up my playlist down here on the bottom, you can see that all of those individual reports, they're basically now PowerPoint slides, but we're still in Solver. We're not having to go to a different tool. So if I wanna speak about my revenue dashboard, I can click on this. We can, we can talk about that, talk about how we're performing. Um, I can click on another report. We can do that and we can work through this whole presentation, but one big benefit you have is that you're still live in the system. So again, you still have that drill down. So if you need to an answer a question on the fly, or if you wanna quickly get an answer on the fly, you're still here in the system. So this can be time saving. So you might still have some PowerPoint presentations that you do, but in a lot of cases, some of those can really be um, minimize the amount of effort to prepare for them because you already have those reports in Solver and you can put them into this presentation um, package. So that is a an overview of Solver from a reporting standpoint and the different capabilities. So hopefully I highlighted, you can see how it works for your different users. So again, just to, to point that out, with the live reporting, that's where you can run your reports on demand. This is also where your power users can create and edit and distribute reports. And then within your archive, all of your users have access to an archive. Everyone's gonna have an archive. It's gonna be their inbox for reports, but you might have some users that only need this. So that's something that's available for your users that only need to receive reports. So that's most of what you can do within reporting. Um, so from there, what I wanna do is build on top of what we've looked at and talk a little bit about planning. So budgeting and forecasting. You can see here that we have another module that's called budgeting. And this is where the budget administrator is able to manage the entire planning process and distribute different work to different users and to maintain the budget and to get really good visibility into what's going on. So if I click on this budgeting module, you're gonna say, hey, this looks pretty familiar. And that's because within our budgeting module, 
everything that you're seeing here, these are again templates, just like those report templates. Again, they're broken out by categories. But the main difference here is with budget templates, there's input capabilities. So with reports, you're just pulling data, looking at the output, maybe drilling down. But with budget templates, what you're doing is you're going to be inputting different assumptions. You're going to be inputting uh, budget drivers and numbers and comments. So these all store that information back to the system. So anytime you run a report, you're going to get that updated budget information. So let me show you. So if I am the budget administrator, this is the view that I would have. So I'm going to be able to see the master library of all of our individual different budget templates. But if I'm just maybe someone like uh, the sales manager or a different department head, I don't need this behind the scenes access. I just need to have specific tasks assigned to me so that when I go into the system, I know to complete my portion of the budget. So it's going to be a little bit different. But right now I'm putting on my hat as budget administrator and I'm going to do a few setup tasks and then show you what it looks like when we push that out to our different end users. So at the start of, of every budget, there's a few things that happen on a pretty standard basis. So one of those is we go into the system and we update our budget assumptions. So these are those global drivers that maybe we want to push out to individual portions of the budget, but we want to control at a more centralized level. So here I'm able to go in and do that. I can choose the version of the budget I want this to be for in the budget year. And then I will go in, I'll make any updates that I want. So here's an example, maybe we're starting next year's budget. And of course, we know that our payroll taxes change on an annual basis. So we want to go in and update those um, those payroll tax rates. Oop, maybe not that high. That would be a little bit painful. But we can put those numbers in here. We can update those. Here we have some assumptions around a blended benefit rate, um, capital life for our fixed asset budgeting. And then we have some assumptions around travel. So these are going to be different. These are fully configurable based on what global drivers you want to use. A lot of times our customers have a number of these around revenue, um, but we set these up so that it's very easy to maintain this in one place. Once you've made your updates, you hit save data. And because that's back in Solver, it's going to flow out to every single related template that you have. So every single model that needs to look to these, instead of having to link an Excel workbook and worry about a broken hyperlink, it's all reading from the same source. So it's never going to have a broken link. It's You're always going to get the same information, no matter which, which report you, want, you run, no matter which budget model you're looking at. So it's always going to be consistent for you. So once I've, I've done that, I've saved my data, I can finish my setup and do any additional setup tasks that I might want to do. Uh, one thing that that is always, we always recommend is inputting some of your strategic corporate high level goals because then you can compare your budget performance against those goals. So this is something that usually comes down from uh, executive management when they're doing that strategic planning. So a little bit of that longer term, maybe three to five year planning where we're setting up some of those goals. Because when we're budgeting, we want to make sure that we're in alignment with those strategic goals. And if we're not, if the numbers that, that we're preparing in our budget aren't in alignment, then we need to figure out whether the budget needs to be adjusted or maybe something's off with the strategy. So this just really gives us another layer of visibility into the business, into performance, so that we can make sure that we're performing um, in alignment with that strategy. So these are sort of high level um, items that we would input um, because it's not going to be as detailed as your annual budget. These are going to be more of those, those KPIs, those, those key areas that you're tracking. So let's say we have some goals for our FTEs. A uh, big one is we might have goals for our, our revenue. So we might put those numbers in. Um, whatever we want to adjust here, we can input all of these, save this data, and then what's going to happen is once we finish our budget, we can run some reports that tell us how did our budget do against these high-level assumptions that are coming in from our uh, strategic vision from our executive team. So this gives everyone that same visibility and puts you into alignment. It makes sure that if I'm the sales manager and I'm doing my revenue budget, that I know that I'm trying to hit the right revenue number that that's being um, you know put forth as part of that broader vision. So it really just aligns everyone from from top to bottom when you're doing your budget. 
so we have our assumptions in there. We have our um, we have our high level multi year strategic goals in there. If I'm ready to start pushing out this information to my different users as the budget manager, what I can do is I can go into my workflow. And from here, I can decide what I want different users to complete as part of the budget. So these are all of my existing workflows. So with any existing workflow, what you're able to do is you can view that and see what progress has been made. So let's say I have this one here called annual budget at the department level, and I wanna see if we're moving along on schedule or if we have some delays or if maybe there's some areas that are lagging that I might need to follow up with. So once I select my workflow, if I hit the status button, I can see exactly what has been completed, um, what's still in progress. So these ones are the ones that are being worked on and what's new. And if it's new, it means that it hasn't been opened yet. It hasn't been touched. So we know that anyone that maybe has something under new, if they're supposed to be pretty far along with their budget, then they might need a little bit of encouragement to get going. And I can slice and dice that, view that in different ways by different users, by different areas of the budget. But this just allows me to make sure that we're progressing on track with, with our budget so that we can make sure that we can hit any critical deadlines. So again, within my workflow here, what I can do is set up specific tasks for different users. Very easy to do. I can do it in probably under a minute, I could have a new workflow up and running. So I just hit this new button and I select the name of my workflow. So this could be your annual budget. It could be maybe a, a monthly reforecast that you're doing. I'm able to assign different reviewers and approvers. So approver is gonna be that formal approval authority. A reviewer is someone that's just participating and maybe providing additional information. And I can also put a window of time for the budget. So if I wanna make sure that this budget can only be worked on for a a window that ends on February 29th, I can set that here. And once that, once we get to March 1st, no further changes can be made unless I allow them. So if I try to go in and we finalize that budget on February 29th and we've run our financials and distributed them, if one of one of our um, budget contributors decides they want to go in and make an adjustment and, and throw it all off, they're not going to be able to do that unless the budget administrator allows that. So it protects your budget, it locks it down, it makes sure that you're always presenting the numbers that you want to present. So any changes, you have really good controls in place for that. And then from there, what I can do is I can select my templates. So I can choose which ones I want to include in the different areas of the budget. I can assign different users to different templates and I can set different areas for them to complete. So like maybe department 100 is one person, department 200, or maybe a specific product or line of business or region. However you break down your data for budgeting, that's how you would assign it out. So once I've done that, I save it and users that have assignments as part of this budget, again, they're gonna get that same notification, letting them know that they have an active assignment in Solver. They can click on that and they'll see exactly what they have to complete. So what that looks like is, I'm gonna to go to my assignments here and I am going to show you what an assignment looks like. So in this case, all of those various workflows that we saw in that workflow module, those are showing up here. But most users, when you have an assignment, you're just gonna have one workflow at a time. So here's that annual budget department level. So I would log in, I would see, oh, I have a workflow for annual budget, my department level budget for me to complete, and I need to open that up. So when I open that up, I can see that there are six different areas that I've been tasked with completing. That includes my, my personnel, my capital, my expenses, um, and my sales budget. So this, of course, will be a little bit different depending on your role, but everyone will have their own uh, different workflow tasks to complete. So let's say I wanna start with um, my personnel, get that one knocked out here. And of course, personnel data is always a, a sensitive area. So what you'll see here is that on the top, all of these parameters where when I was running a report, I could select different parameters. I could run it for maybe a different period. I could run it for um, a different um, scenario. These are locked down for budgeting. So I'm responsible only for department 100. So I can't change this. I can only update and view department 100 when I'm budgeting. 
So here's what it looks like from a payroll budget standpoint. So here we're pulling in all of our existing employees. So this is coming in from our payroll system. So again, this is how we bring together all of those different data sources. So this would be another data source potentially, maybe ADP, paychecks, or if you're doing it in your ERP. We're looking at their annual salary, and then we break all of this out so that we have total comp as well as all of their payroll taxes. And the reason I'm showing you the payroll taxes is because this is what flows in from those assumptions that we update. So when we update those payroll taxes, this will push right into our payroll model, and this will adjust everyone's monthly payroll tax amount um, based on those changes that we make. So you can see here by employee, the payroll taxes, um, some of these cap out. So FUTA is a good example of that, caps out at $7,000. So you can see each employee caps out there. Um, we, we calculate all of the different payroll taxes, work comp, um, FTEs, anything that you need that can be configured in this template. But really, ultimately, the output is that this is all summarized back to your general ledger budget. So you have this level of detail by employee, but the impact is down here. This is what's going to hit your general ledger. So when you're running a financial report, budget versus actual, here's your salary budget um, for full-time, for part-time, and then here's the payroll tax expense. So that's really what happens um, as part of this budgeting process. So I can go in as a budget contributor. I can make any updates that I want to make to this template. Um, let's say I wanted to add another admin assistant because we've been getting really busy. Um, I can put in a higher month for them. Let's say we want them to start in March and we want them to be a full-time employee. And let's put in a salary. As soon as I put that in, they'll start, their salary will be reflected in that month that we've added that headcount. Um, and then that will roll into our budget. So I can make any changes I want with salary increases, um, with people that maybe are leaving the company or that are moving into a different role. All of that I can do. And once I'm happy with my changes, I hit this complete assignment button. And what that will do is it'll notify the person responsible for approving my portion of the budget that I'm done and that they can log in and they can take a look at that. So all of that is tracked here in the, um, in the activity log. So you can see when I started the assignment, if I wanna communicate back and forth and maybe uh, let my approver know why I made some of these changes, I can do all that here. And the nice thing is that all of this history stays with the workflow, stays with the assignment. So next year when we're back in the system and we're budgeting and we're like, I can't remember why we did that. I know there was some reasoning behind that. We have an easy way to find those answers because it's stored with the budget so it keeps it all together for you in one place instead of having to, to dig around in emails, which can be so difficult to do to find exactly what you're looking for. So all of that stays here. So if I'm done, I'm gonna hit complete assignment, let my approver take it from there, they can approve it and then it's finalized for the budget, or they could kick it back to me and say, hey, Stephanie, um, I see you added an admin assistant in March. Um, I don't think we can get budget for that until October, so can you update that? Um, and, and we can make changes until we're happy with that and then finalize that. So that's what um, a, a typical payroll budget looks like. I'll show you one other type of budget model that we see with a lot of our customers, and that is around expenses. So a big area with expenses is um, how can we track for different types of expenses? Because of course, with some of your expense accounts, they're gonna be a very simple budget where maybe you're taking last year's history and you just wanna duplicate that and maybe bump it up a couple percentages. And there are other um, expense accounts where maybe there's a lot of spend there and you need to really break down what's hitting that account because you need that detail um, to really to track and to justify that. So I'll show you how we can do that differently for different types of accounts here. So here again, as, as a department head for my department 100, I opened up my expense template and everywhere where you see these yellow cells, this is where I'm being prompted to make adjustments where I can input values. So this is where my budget numbers are, where these yellow cells are. But if I scroll all the way off to the right, I also have some comparatives coming in here. So these are my comparatives actuals through the current closed period. And then for the remainder of the, the year, the current year that we're in, I have forecast numbers. So because all of our budget forms, it's basically 
basically a solver report with another layer of capability where we can input values, I can pull in any reference data I might need um, at any given time to make sure that it's easy to budget what I need because I have access to the related information. So uh, one thing that you'll find is maybe you're budgeting for marketing and you want to see uh, what's hitting the general ledger, what's what's hitting that account this year. So by bringing in these comparatives, I can always right click, drill down, and I can see the actual transactions that are hitting marketing in the current year to make sure I'm not missing anything. So that just gives you everything in one spot. So let me show you the, the couple different ways that you can budget that are built into Solver. So marketing, that, that looks like that's one of our bigger expenses on this page. So what I want to do is I don't want to put in these lump sums for a couple hundred thousand dollars a month. I want to further break this down so that we can better track it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my spreading and line item details here. And from here, I can add as much information as I want to explain what this, this number is comprised of. So if I want to break this down by vendors, I can do that. If I want to break it down maybe by, by trade shows or by different types of marketing expenses, I can do that. And I can add as many line items as I want. And this is all saved in Solver so that when I'm reporting off of this later, I can drill down and I can see what those expenses were meant to be. So this just gives you more granularity for those areas of the budget where you might need it. Because some accounts you might need it, some accounts you might not. And you don't want to have to input this level of detail for every account because that can become cumbersome if it's it's not something that's going to add value. So that's something that you can do for these accounts where you need that detail. But let's look at maybe a smaller account here where um, potentially we don't want to do that. So here are our gift and donations. This looks like historically this has been a pretty small account, but maybe this year we want to bump that up a little bit. So let's say we, we just want to do a $5,000 amount. I'll put that in. I'll hit my spread button. And that's going to automatically populate the full budget year for me, and it's going to evenly spread that out. So that's another method of quickly populating your budget for the accounts where it makes sense to, to just quickly spread an amount. So that's an even spread. The other thing that you can do is you can spread based on your reference data. So in this case, we had reference data that was showing our, um, our actuals for the current year and our forecast. So any accounts that you might have seasonality factored in, this lets you spread it based on that seasonality. So you can see that ebb and flow um, and it aligns with where you have those peaks and valleys. So it can be a lot more accurate than just doing that 12 month spread or if you're budgeting weekly, depending on however you're budgeting, that even spread sometimes is not accurate with those fluctuations throughout the year, right? So you can, you can budget that way. And then last, if you want to keep it real simple, you have the ability to just maybe copy last year's history. So I could say, give me that reference data and then bump it up by 3% or bump it down by 2%. Easy, simple ways to get those budget numbers in that you can do in different ways based on the type of data that you're budgeting for. So again, once I've done that, I'm going to hit complete assignment and that is going to notify my approver that I'm done. And this will be happening across the organization, right? So you'll have a number of different different budget contributors that are responsible for doing their piece of the budget, and they can all be in the system at the same time. So if you have an Excel spreadsheet, that can be a struggle to have different users completing their portion of the budget at the same time as other users. But with Solver, it doesn't matter because everyone has their various assignments that they're completing. And as the budget administrator, you have visibility to see what's done, what's still in progress, and to really keep your finger on what's been completed so that you can make sure that everything is finalized once you're ready to push out that final budget. So let's say all of our users, they've, they've, they've done their piece of the budget, um, their approvers have approved it, I've, I've checked all the assignments are complete. Now I want to start reporting off of my budget versus my actual and also seeing how did we come in against that strategy that we were looking at? Are we, are we in alignment um, or do we have some issues there that we might need to address? Well, because everything is done in Solver, there is no intermediate step where I've got to uh, upload my budget into a system or I've got to transfer something over or uh, paste it into another file. It's all here. So I can just literally go in, hit run on any report, and I see those budget numbers without anything else having to occur. So let's go here. Um, I'm going to go to my 
playlists because I have a nice budget playlist that's set up that shows me some of the key budget areas that I like to look at. So let's pull this up and let's see how we did on that annual budget. If we have any areas of concern um, or if we came in pretty good based on what we were hoping to do. And this will be the, the proof in uh, how accurately we budget and then we can know if we need to improve in certain areas. All right, so here are my budget reports. So I'm gonna start here with my strategic KPIs and my budget here. So here's my, my budget. So these are those same KPIs that we were looking at that we input from our um, executive team where we we're looking at the multi-year strategy. The goal are the numbers that we input. The goal is the number that we got from them. And the budget, this is what our budget came in at. So we can see that some of these are a, are a little bit problematic, might be a little bit out of alignment. And then this just lets us know where we have areas that we might need to address. Because if there's a huge variance, um, then something's not right. Um, or if we're right in alignment, then we know, okay, we're, we're right on track with company strategy um, from the top down, everyone's on the same page and we can really make sure that we're all sort of uh, marching to the same beat. So this gives you that level Level of visibility. And then from there, what we're able to do is start running immediately budget against actual, budget against prior year, budget against forecast. We can do that in a standard black and white financial report, or we can do that in more of a visual representation um, like this where we're using some of the Excel native capabilities, or of course we can do that in Power BI if we want a more robust type of uh, report or the ability to do different types of simulations there. So just a couple examples there. And here is your, your balance sheet budget. So you can see your budget coming in and your actual and forecast. So that really ties together the last piece of the budget. Once you've completed your budget, you're gonna do your final analysis, make sure there's, there's nothing that needs to be adjusted. And then every month, as you're running these financial statements, you can see how you're performing against budget. And if there's areas that need to be updated or adjusted, it's very, very straightforward to make those changes, to create another version of the forecast um, so that it's more accurate as you progress forward. So really that's our goal. We wanna make it easy for you to have access to the information that you need to make better decisions, to effectively run the business um, so that you can really accelerate growth and get the insight that you need to, to make sure that, that you're performing well. So that's, that's an overview of Solver. So with that, I will flip back here real quickly to my PowerPoint slide. And just to show you, we talked a little bit, I, I showed you a few different things because I wanted you to see in Power BI with our pre-built Power BI integration, what that looks like with some of those visualizations. And then also in, in Solver where we're doing more formatted reports, we're doing our budgeting. And then we also have the ability to add some charts and graphs. Um, but really this is, we're bringing together the best of both worlds because Power BI is, is the leader in what they do. Um, and when we partner that with Solver, we give you a really comprehensive um, corporate performance management solution that addresses all of the important areas um, that you need to have um, in place. So this is what this is information from from G2 Crowd showing both Solver as a leader in CPM and Power BI as a leader in business intelligence and just bringing that all together in a single solution. So that, that is uh, it for what I wanted to cover. Of course, if you want more information, we are always happy to provide that to, to uh, answer anything specific to you or to your, to your business. But um, I guess I will pass it to, to Abby to see if we had any questions during the, the demonstration. Excellent, thanks Stephanie. We did have a few questions. Um, okay, so I'll just go bottom to top. Um, does Solver allow multiple users to budget at the same time? Yes, so that, and I think that's one of the, the things that is definitely important when you have multiple users participating. So yes, you can have as many users in the system simultaneously budgeting. They'll just be working on their own assignments. I've worked with customers where they have 
um, just one or two people that that handle the budget. And I've worked with customers where they have um, like 150 people contributing to different areas, different branches of their business. So that that is not a limitation. You're free to have everyone participate who needs to at the same time. No limit. Okay. No limit. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next was, if we are migrating to another ERP in the near future, should we deploy Solver before or after? Yeah, so that's that's a good question, and that that comes up a lot because um, you know a lot of our our customers and our partners are ultimately making the move to maybe a cloud ERP or a cloud version of the ERP. So what? we're able to do is that if that's something that's on your radar, on your roadmap, if you implement Solver now, um, what you'll be able to do is streamline that migration because you'll have, as you're migrating, Solver will still be able to provide you all of your reports that you need, um, all of your budget templates. And then once you're ready to cut over to the new ERP, we can start pulling that information as well into Solver so you can have your history from your old ERP and your new ERP data in one place. And that can just make it a lot easier where you don't necessarily maybe have to bring in some of the older history because you have it in Solver. So that just often makes that, that migration path a lot smoother and simpler because you're not worrying about losing that data because you still have it throughout the process within Solver. Um, so just two more. Um, and I think you, you were sort of answering this already, but can Solver be used for financial adjustments? Ah, that's, yes. So that's one thing we didn't really show, but spoke to a little bit about when we right. talked about our budget forms. So anywhere where you need to input data into the system, whether it's budget or forecasting, that's saving information into Solver that you can then pull into reports. So let's say at the end of the month, you might need to book some financial ad adjustments, top side adjustment, um, or maybe an, an intercompany adjustment that you don't have in the system. Same process as inputting into a budget form. You can input that adjustment, hit save, and that's now going to be incorporated into your financial package. So we have a number of different customers that do that very thing to make it a lot easier to generate their financials because it it stores it in the database instead of making adjustments in a spreadsheet or or having them in different places. Just an easier way to do it. Perfect. Um, okay, and then here's the fourth that just came in. Um, why are you suggesting the pairing of Solver and Power BI? Is Power BI where we should be doing our dashboarding and then more detailed reports and drill, drill downs via Solver? Yeah, so the thing with Power BI is when you saw at the beginning um, the visualizations that we were able to do with Power BI, so with the KPIs, um, and, and they're very dynamic, so we can isolate different areas within things like the product revenue. Um, that's going to give you the most powerful visualization capabilities that's out there with, within basically any tool that exists out there. So with Solver, um, there's a lot of tools that maybe have a built-in sort of dashboarding component, but it, it in no way can compete with what Solver can do. So from our end, what we found was that if we integrate with Power BI, you're going to be able to do those more powerful visualizations where you need to, but you still have the ability to do all of your formatted reporting um, and then some of the charting and graphing like we saw within Excel in Solver. So once you don't have to, it, it's not something that's required. You can start with Solver. You can see if the charting and graphing in Excel sort of gets you where you want to be right now. And then when you get to the point where you might be ready to do more of that um, dashboard style visualization in Power BI, that can be added on. That's just a connector that can be added on. So it just expands really what you can do with some of the visualization. Perfect. Okay. So those are all of our questions for now. So I guess we can give everyone two minutes back <laughs> of their time. And then did you have anything else you wanted to add, Stephanie? Um, no, I, I think that that pretty much was it. So I, I definitely appreciate everyone that was, that was here today. Thanks for uh, listening to our presentation. Thanks, everyone. Thanks so much.